She was recently named to one of the Hollywood Reporter's most powerful people in podcasting. She's the founder and owner of Audio Chuck, one of the number one true crime podcasting media companies. I'm talking about Ashley Flowers, and she's coming to Austin to share a cold case live. I spoke with her and got some details about her tour. So The Deck is a show we started about a year ago where every week we cover a case that is featured on one card in a cold case playing card deck. These decks were made years ago by investigators who come together and put their absolute coldest cases on these decks of cards. And originally they were passed out in prisons, hoping that somebody had some information and would come forward. So the intention of the show is by featuring one of these cases every week that the information will get to not just prisons, but people out in the community community who might have information. And we've been, like I said, doing the show for a year. And one of the cases that came to our attention that was on a deck is actually here locally in Indiana, where I am. And I just got really close with the victim's daughters. As I learned more about the uh, case, I felt like there was some more that could mm -hmm. be done, more than just one episode for one week. So I put a, one of our journalists on it full time for the last year, and we've gathered a ton of information to help move the case forward. And we're going to be coming to a bunch of different cities, bringing this case as it's more than a live show. I don't know what people expect when it's a live yeah. uh, podcast, but this is more like a live true crime documentary. So there are interviews with past victims of crimes. There's police reports, FBI reports, interviews with, with experts. So we're actually bringing this case in everything that we've done to the last year to these audiences. And that's what Austin's going to get. That's so exciting. And I know it's going to be spread out through several cities. So that being said, is it going to be the same type yeah. of story each time? Yeah. Sorry. So okay. yeah, my goal is again to bring everything we have to people in different cities to get these different cities fired up, get them talking about the case. And so I want to bring the same story to every single stop and then hopefully give them even more information afterwards in our podcast. That's amazing. I love it. And so you're going to be at the Bass Hall here in Austin, which is a great location. I have a feeling that people are going to love it. I know I would like to attend. I will definitely be there. But let's also right. touch on, you know, Crime Junkie, how you got started, and then maybe go into your book right now, which I'm about to finish. Awesome. So I got started in podcasting because I truly loved two things. I love the medium of podcasting. I couldn't consume enough. I was in uh, medical sales at the time, traveling constantly, listened to everything that there was out there. And I couldn't find a show that I was looking for specifically. And I was listening to all the true crime shows because that was my other love was the true crime genre. And so finally I said, you know, maybe I should stop waiting for someone to make the show I'm looking for and make it myself. If people want to come and be a part of the live audience, what is the best way for them to, you know, get tickets, get involved? Yes, yeah, so they can get tickets at thedeckpodcast.com or at ashleyflowers.com. And that's literally all they need to do. Show up, I'm going to tell them the story, and then I'm going to let them know what they can do from there to help with this investigation, with this case. That's amazing. And can you touch a little bit on the case? Can people get it? Yeah. Hit it, teaser. Yeah, so the case is of a woman named Darlene Hulse who was murdered in 1984. She was 28 years old, a mother of three. And one morning when her husband left for work, she was getting her girls ready for the day. It's like 9.30 in the morning. And a man broke into her home or used a ruse to get into her home and literally pulled her from her home in front of her girls. And then she was found the next day in a wooded field a few miles from her home and she'd been murdered. And for 38 years, it has gone unsolved. But I think we're doing a lot of really great work to actually bring some closure. And I think the killer might be a lot closer than anyone realized. It's really interesting. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you.